Let's take a look at a problem that is a multi-part problem, actually, not just because it has A and B, but because it has three different parts to its motion. Uh, we have an elevator cab in a New York hotel with a total vertical run of 624 feet. Its maximum speed is 1,000 feet per minute, and assume three significant figures on that. And its constant acceleration is 4.05 feet per second squared. One thing new about this problem is that it'll be in the American system of units, but if we stay with variables most of the way through the problem, that won't matter much. Uh, I tend to do that anyway. Another thing that's new is the part B on here. Well, part A asks how far upward does it move while accelerating to full speed. Part B asks how long does it take to make the run starting and ending at rest. And this splits into a three-part problem here. So uh, we'll look at that later. I'm going to pull it off here for now. It uh, accelerates with a constant acceleration, so it's a constant acceleration problem. Then when that's the case, I can use these equations. I'm actually going to change my x's to y's on this problem. So I'll have y equals y naught plus v naught. I can call it v naught y if I want. t plus one half a sub y t squared. There's one equation. Another one would be v sub y equals v naught y plus a sub y t. Let's see, and the third equation would be v sub y squared minus v naught y squared equals 2a delta y. So I've done something a bit different than we've had in other problems. I've replaced my x's with y's. But these are my three equations for motion with constant acceleration. How far upward does it move while accelerating to full speed from rest? Well, let's see. I know the acceleration. I know the final velocity, although the final velocity is in feet per minute, and that's not a convenient unit because I've got my acceleration in feet per second squared. So I'm going to change that. So uh, V sub Y, this is actually the maximum velocity in the Y direction, is 1,000 feet per minute. If I multiply that by 1 minute over 60 seconds. The minutes will divide out and I'll end up with feet per second and that turns out to be 16.7 feet per second. Okay now I just want to know how far up it goes while it's accelerating to full speed. I could do this two ways. Uh, one way because I know the acceleration I know that it starts at rest so uh, v naught y is equal to zero for part a. I'm also going to define y naught to be zero for part a. I'll just count the ground level it begins from as my zero. In this equation I could set v naught y equal to zero. I know the final speed. It'll be 16.7 feet per second. I know the acceleration and I could solve for time. Then I could take that time that I get and plug it into this equation and I'd have the distance that it traveled. But I don't have to do that intermediate step of solving for time. I can use this equation here. V naught y is zero. Delta y is what I'm after. That's how far it rises while it's accelerating to this speed. And so I'm just going to use this equation here. With v naught y equals zero, that equation becomes v sub y squared equals 2a delta y, or delta y is equal to v sub y squared over 2a. And my v sub y is that 16.7 
feet per second. That's squared. Two times that 4.05 feet per second squared down here. Unit wise, I've got feet squared per second squared on top. I'll just show you this off to the side here. On the bottom, I've got feet per second squared. And when this is inverted and multiplied by that, because I'm dividing a fraction by a fraction, I'll end up with the second squared dividing out and left with nothing but feet. And when I do this, what I get is 34.4 feet. So there's the answer to part A. Let's move on to part B. Part B says, how long does it take to make the run, starting and ending at rest, and it must slow down to a stop at the end of its climb? This is the part that I'm going to break into three parts. And I'm going to start by making a quick graph here to illustrate just what this thing is doing. Just making a Y versus T graph for the motion of this thing. And... I'm not going to put any labels or any numbers on here, but uh, it starts from rest, which means the slope of a y versus t graph would be horizontal at the beginning because it has zero velocity, but it accelerates. Okay, so it does something like that. Then there's a stretch where it moves at constant speed upward for a while, and then it slows to a stop at the beginning. And if it's slowing down, the slope of the y versus t graph will be decreasing. And if it comes to a stop, it's going to decrease to zero. So it does something like this. So here's where it is at the very top. Here's where it began. There's a span of time here where it's accelerating from rest to a final velocity. There's a span of time here where it's decelerating or slowing down from that maximum velocity down to zero. And I say that these two time periods are going to be exactly the same. And I can show you that here. And then we've got the constant velocity part here. So let's see how this thing works out. I happen to know uh, how far it travels in this stretch. 34.4 feet. I also will claim that it travels that same distance in here, but I need to show you that. So let's see how this works out. Okay, on that first part, I never actually figured out how long it took to accelerate to the final speed. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'll be using this, that v sub y is going to equal v naught y plus a sub y t. v naught y is zero for this part, so I'll just put a zero on there. And I've got v sub y equals a sub y t, or the time for that interval is going to be v sub y over a sub y which will be at 16.7 feet per second divided by the 4.05 feet per second squared. And the time I get is 4.12 seconds. So I know that this time interval lasts 4.12 seconds. At the end of the motion, I'll have my, right here at the beginning of this interval, I'll have its initial speed is going to be that 16.7 feet per second. The elevator is slowing down with that same acceleration that it had at the beginning. And so 
a sub y is going to be negative 4.05, the same magnitude of acceleration it had at the beginning, that is, feet per second squared. And at the end of this interval, v sub y is going to be 0. So this equation here, v sub y equals v naught y plus a sub y t, looks a little different here because this is the one that's 0. This one isn't. And if I solve that for t, this time I'll get t is minus v naught y over a sub y. I'm going to go on the left here because I'm running out of space. That'll be negative. 16.7 feet per second on top. On the bottom, I'll have the acceleration in that direction, which is minus 4.05 feet per second squared. And you probably notice these are exactly the same numbers that I had up here when I did it. And I get exactly the same time interval, 4.12 seconds. So, Got the same time interval here. This little delta t is 4.12 seconds. You can do a little bit of work and find out that it traveled 34.4 feet in this one. It would also travel 34.4 feet in this interval. So if I carry these on over here, this is also 34.4 feet. So, bringing the initial information about the problem back in front of us, it has a total vertical run of 624 feet. Well, we used up 34.4 feet of that 624 feet accelerating to the maximum speed. We used up another 34.4 feet of that, slowing down from the maximum speed to rest at the top. And so, the actual distance that we have to travel at constant velocity is a little different. So let's figure out what that thing is. 624 feet minus 2 times 34.4 feet. I get 555 feet for that distance that it has to travel. Well, now I can just use this. I have a stretch where it's moving at constant velocity in the y direction. I can just say delta y is going to equal v sub y times t. The v sub y is that 16.7 feet per second that it's been going at. The delta y is 555 feet, so 555 feet is going to equal 16.7 feet per second times t. That time interval ends up being 555 feet divided by 16.7 feet per second. And I get 33.2 seconds. So here's what my total time will be. It will equal the time speeding up at the beginning plus the time, maybe I'll wrap these in parentheses here, time at constant speed plus the time slowing down and this happens to be that uh, 4.12 seconds the time at constant speed was the 33.2 seconds and the time slowing down was also 4.12 seconds so I get a total time for the trip of 41.5 seconds, and that's good enough. Fairly complex problem.